Valley. Um, Super. Okay. So I've been kind of riding along with, uh, with their thinking. Yeah, that's great. Super. So our first goal today was to talk through, talk through the Google summer of doc, season of docs retrospective. Yeah. And, so it looked like we got shut out of that. Correct. Right. And that was, that was why we wanted to do a retrospective. Yeah. Our hope is that the docs group, that this special interest group will also be able to contribute significantly even without season of docs. Mm -hmm. Welcome for welcome. Thanks for joining. Oh, whoop. I just pressed mute. Radek, thank you very much. Oh, and I, I need to unmute. There we go. Unmute. Mm -hmm. Okay, Radek, welcome. Hey, hey, great. Cheers, guys. So, are there any agenda items that you would like to add? No, no, no. It's fine for me. I mean, it's the first time I'm joining you guys. Uh, so I'm just going to lurk for a while and see what happens and what you learned from the past in this opening stuff. <laughs> yeah, poor Mark. He's got two lurkers and <laughs> he's the only one with a paddle. <laughs> that is not a problem. Thanks very much to both of you for joining me. Given that Oleg's not here and I'd like to be able to start crisply, I'm going to move his topic further down and when he arrives, we'll bring it onto the agenda. So let's, what I propose is let's talk first about the DOC special interest group infrastructure and that way we make sure that we know what actions the two of you and others who want to help with DOCs can take specifically so that they can better assist with DOCs. Um, so first thing, let's let's talk about how we get more involved in docs. And the first step is this join the copy editors team in GitHub. So what I'd like to do is put an action item on for for Ashton, definitely for you. Radek, I don't know if you're willing to accept the action item, but <laughs> to join the copy editors team. I on, thought I was on the copy editors team. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's take a look. What I see is... But I might have gotten oh, removed from... You are. Very good. So, um, now, is anybody else from documentation on there? They are not. Oh, Tammy. Oh, Tammy. Tammy. Okay. So, but we've got more of your team members. So, John Ha, for instance. Yeah, John Ha with Jenkins X. Um, and I think Kim Nylander. Okay. Um, Let's put that as an action item. To but definitely John Ha. Yeah, John Ha joined. Well, although, and I guess let me put an action item. Let's do this is that John Ha. Ah, how do we do an action item? <laughs> I know, we insert it as a comment. I remember this. So, um, I, either Tammy or myself can reach out. And, uh, and what John's got to do is he's got to identify how to how to contribute docs to the Jenkins X project. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how to do that, and I think it's different than the copy editor's group. It may be. Okay. Welcome, Oleg. Yeah, hi. Welcome, Chris and Yashuk, uh, according to <laughs> Zoom. Yes. You, you, yeah, so you we are using KCDF account, right? Correct. This is a Zoom test right now. We're using the Continuous Delivery Foundation test account. So I apologize okay. that mine is labeled as Chris, and, and we're just test driving. Okay, that's perfectly fine. Great. Oh, that is a wonderful sound, Oleg. I love that sound. <laughs> Oleg's got a co-pilot today. He does, and I'm, I'm yeah. all in favor of co-pilots. That's great. Yeah, so you will enjoy uh, uh, the meeting. <laughs> I'm, about that. I'm connected from phone. That's wonderful. Thanks for being here. And welcome, Kristen. Great to have you here as well. And John has joined. John, we just assigned an action item to you to provide us with some hints on how to contribute or, or learn how to contribute to 
Jenkins X docs because I think it's different than how we contribute to the Jenkins.io docs. So by way of agenda team, we had we had said we wanted to first learn from our mistakes on the Jenkins or on the Google season of docs retrospective. Uh, I submitted the the application. We were one of 200 groups that applied. Only 50 were selected in this inaugural year. We weren't one of those 50. But Oleg had asked, hey, let's have a retrospective to be sure that we get better at doing this. And if there is a Google season of Docs next year, we have a better chance of winning. So Oleg, did you want to lead that discussion? Yeah, I cannot share my screen now, but I can uh, briefly explain uh, what were the main weaknesses. So. Yeah, I spent some time going uh, to, uh, through accepted organizations. So our biggest problem is that uh, we didn't really have uh, the GSO landing page uh, because yeah, almost every organization in the accepted list, uh, they have created uh, some pages uh, either on the org sites or in um, uh, GitHub wikis, whatever, but they had uh, a kind of landing pages. And in the case of Jenkins, I believe that final su uh, submission was still pointing to the Google Doc, right, M Mark? It was, that's correct. So it yes. was, and that's a technique you've used with Google Summer of Code. We absolutely have landing pages on Jenkins.io for all the Google Summer of Code project ideas, okay. Uh, yeah, right, otherwise uh, we would have, no, uh, have had no chance to be accepted to JSOC. And that's pretty much what we were discussing at the GSOT meeting uh, before the application deadline. But yeah, if, even if we could have kept project ideas in a free form, but we needed a landing page. Great, all right. So that, that seems like a natural outcome of this ex exercise. We're going to need on Jenkins.io a bunch of docs ideas anyway. So that, I like that, great. Any other thing? Yeah, yeah, another thing that, uh, yeah, indeed, we had something like five project ideas. Uh, but uh, for these five project ideas, we had only one project idea with listed potential mentors. So uh, Google, uh, when they were evaluating our application, they were unable to tell how many potential mentors uh, we were able to find. And yeah. In such case, it's also not an advantage for an applying organization. Hey, and was that, that the project idea, I thought every one of the project ideas had mentors listed. No, not, and uh, only one project thought. idea had uh, mentors. Okay. Uh, for example, Jenkins X project idea didn't have potential mentors listed. Uh, project ideas like, uh, uh, let's improve plugin developer documentation. Uh, yeah, it had uh, no uh, mentors, and moreover, it had uh, unresolved comments about, uh, for example, me pinging Daniel Beck, whether he would be interested without any response. Got it. So, yeah, just because this Google Doc wasn't supposed to be a final doc uh, we would have been submitting. Right. So, yeah, if I was reviewing this application, it would be a kind of yellow flag for me immediately. Yeah, I think we had John Ha as a mentor. We just apparently neglected to put that on the list, I guess. Yep. Just to, well, and, and Oleg's right. We didn't have a formal page that would have rigorously listed those things. Anyway, yeah, and we, yeah, moreover, we didn't uh, have uh, links from uh, uh, this Google Doc page to other uh, uh, documentation uh, resources we have in the Jenkins community. For example, Jenkins CI Docs mailing list. So again, it uh, comes to the lack of landing page because yeah, what we have, uh, usually we have a page with all contacts mentioned, whether it's special interest group of the uh, project, uh, we have uh, uh, the information on the Jenkins IO site. And yeah, uh, for Google season of docs, uh, community bonding is still an important uh, part. So we, uh, with our application, probably it wasn't clear whether he, we bond uh, potential uh, uh, tech writers to the community and which channels we are going to use 
folder. Thanks. Any any other insights on? So I felt like I had also not done a, an adequate job on preparing the the application. I just took your content, all like that you had done such a good job on, but then just pasted it in without putting my own effort into it. And again, no. Yeah. Landing. Moreover, if we are doing retrospective, you took an action item to prepare landing pages. So yeah, I moved on to other things, but then you didn't have have time to actually post uh, the pages. So if you have said me that you have no capacity to post these pages, maybe I would have approached it uh, differently and I would have created the content. Good. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I yeah. Same for the Jenkins X if we had known we needed one, but I just um, next time, you know, John and I both have access to contributing to the Jenkins X. Um, community pages. So, if we need to create any pages, we we can we can do that. Mhm. Mm yeah. Yeah, so uh, f these uh, first three items and primary weaknesses, actually each of them could have been uh, enough to not be accepted this year because, yeah, this year it was a high competition between organizations. Actually, I didn't expect so high competition because the yeah, season uh, of uh, Doc's uh, mailing list were not a detective, Slack wasn't a detective, uh, but, yeah, it looks like uh, my organizations, yeah, the announcement about JSOT has been distributed to all uh, JSOC organizations. So, yeah, many of them applied silently, uh, and yeah, finally we got a lot of applications number. Great. Okay. Okay. Any, any other insights that you want to share? Mm, well, Probably we could have facilitated the Google Season of Docs more in the community channels. Because, yeah, I sent a, a couple of emails, uh, but, yeah, really uh, we didn't do any focused advertisement uh, in the community, uh, mostly due to the lack of time, because yeah, it was in parallel with uh, JSOC, uh, which was pretty hot. And, yeah, I also had some other stuff to do. So, yeah, maybe if we have facilitated it uh, better, we would have got better, more visibility, more project ideas, etc., etc. So when you say community channels, are you talking about the Jenkins users mailing list or the Jenkins developers mailing list? Are there specific channels that are on your mind? Everything, uh, including blog posts or whatever. So, yeah, it depends on how much time you have. You can spend all the time you have on promoting the event. Yeah. Hey everybody! Hi. I'm um, sorry, just coming in late and a bit mm -hmm. distracted. Um, yeah, just one comment on this retrospective. It just seems very one-sided. So we're kind of just hammering on all the negative things. But I think we should take some time to say what we did well as well. Yeah, we should do it, of course. Uh, the first item was just uh, primary weaknesses. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah I, just, I like uh, to start I'm with the problem. positive. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, let's uh, uh, add an item for positives. All right. okay, I, I just, before we go on to the positive, I just want to say, I mean, I think um, it seems like, um, you know, Mark's lack of, of time to work on this, um, you know, kind of hindered some of the things that we needed to do to, um, to compete with the other applications. Um, I think that, you know, we can put that here and then, you know, next year address whether, um, you know, we someone who can work on it during um, uh, and file these time, you know, maybe if that makes it um, easier or, or, or allows us to get everything done. And, you know, with, yeah. uh, with Mark being a, a consultant since he's um, familiar with this, with this type of work. Yeah, for me it was uh, a bit different because because originally I had time reserve uh, for creating JSOT landing pages, etc. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, I just moved uh, on to other things when uh, Mark said he will do that. 
so yeah first uh, item but uh, so yeah maybe it's an action item uh, for you mark that uh, if you see that uh, you have lack of time just let people know because we had a lot of people in, interested in JSOT and we could have a load balance at that right right that was I think that's the I like that acknowledge the overload and pass action items to others I think that's very healthy Kapole. very good yeah I continuously get overloaded so yeah. it's right. probably an action item for me as well but yeah yeah I mean I I yeah. you know I really want um you know the documentation group to um you know participate more in in the community and you know I I had time to decide for them you know for both John and, and Petra to be part of this um so you know if if someone on my team needs to have cloud these time dedicated to being one of the coordinators next year, um, I'm happy, you know, to offer that. I think that, um, you know, that we're going to spend the next year, especially on the Jenkins X side, um, really uh, being a, a larger part of the community. You know, John's already attending office hours and has a lot of proposals in place, and we certainly want to do the same for Jenkins. Um, so, you know, maybe maybe that's a that you know that's a change we can make next year. Um, you know, I know Tracy was, you know, um, the the second coordinator, or whatever it's called. But you know, I'm, I'm happy for someone on my team to be that. But I, you know, I don't, um, I don't want to, you know, take it away from Mark if he, um, if you know, he feels strongly that he wants to to do it at his own time. But I'm just putting it out there. I can dedicate, you know, Cloudbee's time to it. Great. That sounds very yeah. promising. Yeah, and maybe we also could get some support from um, a CDF next year because yeah, there are four projects and I believe that uh, all of these projects uh, would definitely from but uh, would benefit from better documentation. So this year it was just too early to even consider coordinating it in CDF, but maybe next year we could try doing so. Right. Very good. So positives. I'm going back to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I apologize, Tracy, but I think I learned much more from discussing negatives. It's very kind of you to want to do positives, but there's much more education for me in talking about the things we did wrong. So, yeah, I think you have to put them in context. Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah, we have actually many other people on the call who participated, so maybe somebody else would like to say something about positives uh, for starters, of course. Um, I think positives. I think the idea, the the topic ideas we had um, were really good, right? We were able to come together as a group and propose um, some some great topics, both in Jenkins and Jenkins X. <clears throat> it's like Kristen saying she she thought the same thing, and I think we um, we did not lack for mentors within this group. Um, we just didn't, you know, do a great job about communicating that in our application. So. Thanks. Yeah. Now, now one of the one of the concerns for me on oops, on mentors is that I think we need some more facilitation for our mentors so that they can help with the actual process things that are going on right now in Jenkins documentation. So there, we'll we'll touch on that a little later in the meeting. I think. Yeah, and I, I think I'll add just on the positives. You know, it sort of came up with. It, you know, not that much notice, and we did rally quite a significant group of people together. There was a lot of engagement from the community. People who don't sort of necessarily get involved with other things had an opportunity to sort of say, hey, I'd like to be part of this. Um, so that was really good. And, you know, it has led to the SIG. So as a trigger point for a documentation SIG, I think that's fantastic. Um, and I'll also say, I don't know if this was shared earlier, but... The feedback was that they had 200 organizations apply and only 50 made it. So, you know, in some ways, like until we get our application clean, we might not even know that, you know, there was nothing we could have done because there were just 50 shiny, shinier ones. Um, but, yeah, just to get that application even done and people organize for that, um, you know, with a number of working in their spare time, I think that's amazing. We should be, you know, proud and happy of that, with that. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. I like it. <clears throat> Thank you. Any other any other items to note in the in the positives in terms of our retrospective? Yeah, one thing probably similar to Doc's seek. Uh, yeah, the fact that we didn't get accepted to GSOT uh, was another factor which finally made me to seriously explore community bridge platform. <laughs> so it's something I added to the agenda for the yesterday's advocacy and outreach seek. But yeah, maybe we'll discuss it uh, next time. Uh, but yeah, I'm exploring ways to have another program maybe in autumn. And yeah, um, uh, doing something for documentation that yeah. would be feasible. So it's not limited to coding like uh, JSOC. Any other, yeah. any other feedback? Okay. I'd like to shift gears then. We've only got about another 20 minutes. And I wanted to be sure that we have a chance to, to take some specific topics for Oleg, are you, are you okay with us shifting gears in terms of the retrospective, or would you like us to capture some specific action items? Well, I think that, uh, yeah, we didn't uh, formally discuss what we want to improve, but uh, yeah, it, actually we can uh, discuss it uh, at the next meeting. So everybody can think what uh, you want to improve, and then we meet again and uh, discuss how to improve the framework. Maybe by this time we will have a six skeleton. So that, uh, yeah, uh, we can uh, set it for the next meeting. I like that. So the, so basically it's attendees, attendees and others propose specific action items based on, on what we learn on the retrospective. Is that a fair way to say it, Ole? Yeah. Great. Okay. So then I wanted to I wanted to steal some time be in this meeting agenda to encourage us in terms of the doc sig and some specific things we can do right now to begin contributing to Jenkins docs and Jenkins X docs. So that was my my proposal on this next segment is let's find ways that those of you who are on the call, all of us on the call, can become more actively involved in helping the Jenkins Docs efforts and the Jenkins X Docs efforts. So first piece is I need to follow the instructions that have been given in the Jenkins Enhancement Proposal 4, JET 4, that say how we create the doc SIG, and we're in process of doing that. A pull request needs to be made. Uh, et cetera, but what of you can do in joining this GitHub copy editors team. So you'll find the hyperlink there. This grants you permission to assist with reviewing submissions to the Jenkins IO doc site. And as mentors, one of our key roles is to review the contributions of others and help them get those contributions submitted to the Jenkins, Jenkins IO site. Now, John or Tammy, I don't know how to contribute to Jenkins X documentation. Would you be willing to do a blog post or take on the action item to do a blog post for us? Uh, a blog post for which blog? Just for Jenkins, Jenkins X, X blog, I guess. X blog, some place to, I, what I was thinking is we need a place where people can go who want to contribute to Jenkins X docs and yep. know how to do that. So I'm thinking that um, we need, John, if you could look at the Jenkins X community docs right now um, and find, the, you know, the section about contributing. If it doesn't exist, write it, right? Maybe it just doesn't even exist at all. And then write a CloudBees blog on how you were able um, to join the community, like what steps you went through, right? Join the office hours, make a proposal, start doing pull requests and then getting accepted into the proper GitHub groups, right? There's a Slack channel you join. All of that stuff I think would be a great CloudBees blog that then would link to um, specific instructions on how to contribute um, Jenkins X docs on the Jenkins X community site. Sure, yeah, I can, um, I can, uh, I've, I've been taking a, a, a few notes about their, uh, the Jenkins, uh, the JX, Dash docs uh, repository and um, 
uh, I can write a blog post about how that's structured and how to contribute to it. Sure. Yeah, no, I think that'd be great. I'll add it to our agenda to talk to um, uh, during our next one-on-one, -on -one, but I think yeah, we'll probably need a, um, a GitHub issue in the Jenkins X docs repo and then an internal JIRA for the blog post. Um, but that's certainly something we can do. Okay. Uh, two questions from me, actually, because I took a look into the GitHub repositories right now. So I don't see in the current content six, according to Jeff four, I don't see the GSOD there at all. Uh, and the other thing, the copy editors team that is linked, uh, I actually cannot, I get a 404, so I don't see a way to request yeah. access to that. Same here, I get a 404 on that, so. Yeah, because uh, in order to see this team, you have to be a member of Jenkins uh, Infra Organization. Uh, so the best way to request access is actually to just send email to the Jenkins developer mailing list. Yeah, right. so I think we okay. should, let, yeah. we, maybe we can put those instructions somewhere in the blog yes, post. Exactly. I, yeah, I can uh, put uh, that uh, on the readme of Jenkins IO, for example. So there is Jenkins IO oh, contributing yeah. page and uh, we yeah. could just put it there. Yeah, that's a good That would be great, yeah. Place. So, Oleg, and is the copy editor's team the right choice for that? I was, I was assuming... Oh, well, uh, so in order to add a person to copy editor's team, I would like to see at least some track of contribution uh, to the Jenkins organization. Uh, but again, uh, you don't have to be a member of copy editor's team in order to review changes. Uh, you can right. just subscribe to the repository, and that's it. Once you subscribe to the repository, you will get notifications about new pull requests. So then yeah, you can just review them, and yeah, eventually we can uh, grant you merge permissions. So copy editors effectively means merge permission. Okay, so then what that's really saying is it's premature for many of the people on this call to request access to copy editors. It'd be healthier if they simply began reviewing pull requests. Yeah, so oh. right there. Yeah. yeah, it's my interpretation. We don't have, yeah. so we have a kind of implied policy for Jenkins Core, but yeah, Jenkins Core is a bit, uh, well, yeah, it's uh, uh, more risky. Yeah, and for copy yeah. editors, uh, most likely uh, members of copy editors also need to sign an uh, individual contributor license agreement with Jenkins. Because once you get merge mm -hmm. permissions on Jenkins IO, you can screw the entire website. <laughs> Got it, right. Which means, which really means for us as reviewers, the most important thing is just begin reviewing pull requests. Not yeah. that they really need to, okay, so that's a different, different focus. So begin reviewing pull requests is much more important actually than becoming a member of than becoming a member of <coughs> what did you yeah, so, oh sorry go yeah I just wanted to say that uh, maybe it makes sense to define copy editors process actually as a job assuming that uh, there is somebody who can help me with uh, this job to be delivered because uh, yeah we need PDFL to assign uh, the PDFL delegate and other such things yeah. And it's not trivial for me. Do we need to do it as a JEP or just, uh, it sounds like the process is already there. We just need to capture it in, put it in the contributing. Yeah, I mean, we can just put it in contributing for now. Yeah, I think yeah. that's just a nice on-ramp of, you know, start off doing pull requests, follow, follow the repo, review. Once you've done a few, you can send a request to the dev list. And here's the yeah. thing, other things you have to do, contribute. Agreement. Okay. Yeah, I agree with you. My job is over, kill there. Yeah. Kristen, did you have something you were going to say? Sorry, Kristen? Oh, it's all good. Um, sorry. I, was, I think I was starting to think about what else we could do for kind of part of this is maybe we can start looking at additional, like now since we have more time, additional projects or even kind of finding good documentation tickets for people who are looking to get started with Cloud, or sorry, with Jenkins too, because we have all this, like there's a lot of documentation out there. And unfortunately on the website, when I was going through and looking at some of this documentation, you could see a whole bunch of um, little triangle warning signs where it was just kind of exclamation points. <laughs> that was, yeah. This is to be completed. So maybe it's a good idea to start coming up with some, as part of maybe the SIG, some like tickets that are easy for people to get started with documentation. Excuse me, the documentation. Yeah, right, uh, so. 
Yeah, I totally agree with Kristen. Uh, mm-hmm. Actually, we already de- spent some time creating new friendly tickets. So there is a website project on, uh, in Jenkins Jira. And uh, for the last c- October 1st uh, in 2018, uh, we created, uh, we, yeah, we found or created maybe 15 uh, new friendly tickets on the website. Obviously, awesome. we could, uh, create more. So, okay, so that, that clarified something for me. Like, so the website Jira group is the preferred place for things related to Jenkins.io? IS- yeah. Okay. More specifically, Jenkins.io, uh, and there is a component uh, in this Jira project called uh, content. So I guess uh, the most of newbie-friendly tickets will go there. So when we have our page, let's definitely make sure we link out to that. Right. Yeah. Okay, so in the in the so in the content project, okay, and link to the to newbie friendly from the uh, from contributing committee. Right, got it. Thank you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Very good. Yeah. Also, we actually do have uh, documentation tickets uh, in Jenkins project, I mean Jenkins Jira project, because we have a lot of documentation embedded in the GitHub repositories or built-in documentation. So maybe we could uh, also uh, create a query which uh, takes it into account. So I can prepare this query, or you can create uh, this query mark. So I, I went looking for documentation in the in the what I'm used to as the Jenkins project in Jira and wasn't terribly successful. So that's if you're willing to do that, I would love to get some tutoring out of the lake. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Maybe at the next meeting, uh, I'll probably uh, spend uh, an hour in order to prepare filters, and then uh, we just uh, discuss it at the next meeting and see what's missing there. Great. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and uh, if you, Kristen, uh, yeah, or somebody else, if you're interested in this topic, any help will be appreciated. So we just need to agree on the label, something like docs or documentation, uh, and then uh, uh, we can prepare everything else. Mm. All right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Probably I can also help with that. But a question: Do we have a central? Uh, is there a central page that describes actually the? Current Jira projects and the tickets that should be used weren't when. I mean, for the for the previous points, right? Uh, that we wrote, use the website Jira tickets, prefer blah blah and stuff like that. Do we have a? Is there any page in conference currently that describes all the projects that are in in the issues Jira currently? I don't think so. There is. That would be useful, I I, I think, for newcomers, right? Okay. So, Radek, I'm I'm wrestling with. Are you thinking a list of of like <coughs> plugin plugins or components? No, 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 no. I'm I'm talking about projects. So, like Oleg mentioned that you know there is a new project and there is a specific label under that project that is uh, for SIG docs uh, and like considering there are uh, there are a lot of other SIGs or ideas and stuff in in that Jira. I think it's a, it's a good useful at least for the newbies uh, uh, to look at the central page. For people who are coming to this new, um, I mean, I think it would be really useful to have some way to understand kind of history and context. Uh, the, you know, just, you know, how things have worked and how they, and how they are working, what processes are in place or how things, how things are decided. I know, I know from, from my perspective as somebody coming to this new, um, I felt like the decision-making process was a little opaque um, and, and just uh, not intuitively instantly understandable. And, and it made me nervous about, about trying to jump in because I didn't want to step on toes. Yes. Good feedback. Yeah. I think, making things discoverable as well in a kind of self-service way. So people like all this, even I'm learning lots of new things, but kind of going, yeah, how do we expect people 
to discover this or find it, figure it out for themselves. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because you know, I mean, this is I'm I'm less concerned about the history and why why the things change, but I'm more concerned about why, how they work actually right now, right? Because like I always spent uh, like for instance, I don't know, with Jenkins, right? Uh, I spent half a day looking where the security things are written down in the code that are like uh, uh, showing up uh, in the UI, right? Because I couldn't find it anywhere in the documentation. I mean, okay, for the developers, it's fine to, to dig in, into the code, right? But if we, if we have concise documentation, that it saves time, right? So, so Radek, just to be clear, are, are you okay with that being conceptually as part of the doc sig? On Jenkins.io, or is, was there a different location that? So we haven't created. I haven't created the pull request yet for that. So it's a good candidate. Is that would that be okay? Or are you envisioning a different? Me, I mean, I don't, I don't know how it worked up up to now, but uh, for me, it's perfectly fits, right? Okay, great, thank you. I was hoping that was that was a good fit. All right, very good. So that docsig pull request, that's my action items. Um, so let's just put this one on me as well. Other, other topics, other issues with regard to docs infrastructure. So I've got one more, which is monthly meeting frequency. We've got about five minutes left on our scheduled time. Um, yes. Yeah. Oh. Go ahead, Oleg. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I just uh, wanted to answer your previous question. So I think maybe for the next meeting, we should discuss uh, Jenkins plugin site because it's one of uh, the ways for users to get documentation about plugins. And yeah, right now, uh, the state of this plugin site is far from optimal. I'm not sure whether it's exactly a docs uh, seek, but it's something we could discuss. Yeah, so just a little bit of history that I understand about it since starting in September. Um, you know, Docs owns the site because nobody else <laughs> um, does uh, because it's part of, of go.cloudbees.com. Um, we know there are... Uh, sorry, uh, no, no. the plugin site. <laughs> yeah, so plugin site on. <laughs> confounding two topics, sorry. Yeah. Oh, like you secret oh, sorry, I thought you were talking about the thing you, were t you asked about earlier on Slack. You are talking about the... The community one? Right. Yeah, so okay. Oleg's talking about plugins.jenkins.io. I think, it, okay. did I get that correct? Yeah, so right now, since we are at public special interest group we're meeting, I'm uh, talking only about, uh, about plugins Jenkins.io. And the current okay. state is that uh, this plugin hasn't been really maintained uh, since uh, Jenkins 2.0. <sighs> and yeah, yeah, there is definitely <laughs> some things which could be improved there. Oh, like the things that could be improved everywhere. <laughs> well, yeah, that's for sure. I just proposed to edit uh, to the next uh, meeting. So right. the site is not bad, but yeah, there are some things which we could change in order to um, simplify access to the plugin documentation and to information by users. Right. So. I think kind of a lot. Oh, sorry. Go for it, Mark. <laughs> no, Kristen, you have the floor. Uh, I was thinking, like, kind of along these lines, maybe something we should also look at defining in the future is just kind of a standard about how we kind of want to lay things out so it's a little bit easier for people. I know that the whole, we want it to keep it, like, everyone documenting everything, kind of, like, keeping it all over the place, but maybe, like, include in some of the plugins, hey, can you at least include, like, a common usage and, like, a one or two line description, but just something a little bit to help us with figuring out what's going on with that plugin site. I know that a lot of organizations will have a lot or, you know, like a lot of those plugins and like the people who are working on them will have like a lot of documentation, a lot more than that, but maybe it's, that's something we should look at as a group too. Great. Excellent. Okay. So consider that we'll add that to, as a topic to the future meeting and uh, we can do research on it, et cetera. We can certainly use the Gitter channel and, the Jenkins CI docs mailing list for discussions on the topic without having to be in the meeting. Excellent, thank you.
Okay, so we now are at two minutes prior to what our scheduled end time is. Uh, one last negotiation here is when, how often do we want to meet and at what recommended time? So the SIG requirement is we must meet at least monthly. Given the level of interest here, I'm prone to recommend every two weeks rather than monthly. And if we have to skip one for something, that would be okay. Comments? Yeah, I'm fine with two weeks. At least it definitely makes sense to have the next meeting in two weeks, taking uh, the discussion about new friendly tickets, etc. So there is a lot of low hanging fruits, which we can actually discuss at the next meeting call already. Okay. Good. So let's, I'm going to take it as we're going to go for meeting frequency every two weeks until we decide differently because that works for me, and given the inner energy level that seems to be in this meeting, I like that. Um, Western Europe and Eastern Asia, or given the folks who are on this call seem to be, at the moment at least, all in Western Europe due to a Western Europe time zone. Do you want me to just do Western Europe? Should we do alternating back and forth? So next week we do it in Western Europe time, or next in two weeks in Western Europe, and then four weeks from now we'll do something that fits better with our colleagues in China and Australia. Maybe it's a topic to discuss in the mailing list. Because, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not sure what's Rick's availability for evenings. But, yeah, Rick definitely wanted to discuss some topics about documentation, especially in uh, Chinese and other. Right. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it's not necessary to have a special docs seek meeting for that because we can just go to Chinese localization seek. Uh, but, yeah. All right. Uh, let's just discuss it in the mailing list. Will do. Okay. And FYI, we're using Zoom as an experiment here rather than Hangouts specifically because it works better for those who are in, in China. Uh, this is the experiment. We'll see how it works. We'll go forward from there. Yeah, I have one concern about using Zoom for such meetings, but I will follow up with you, Mark, and uh, with you, Trace, see you later. Great. Thank you. All right. Are there other urgent topics that we need to get? We've hit the end of our 40-minute schedule, 45-minute scheduled time. Are there things that you're you're concerned about that we absolutely must discuss? If not, I propose we end here and shift to discussing things in the in the online chat and in the mailing list. Yes.